Good evening. evening. Welcome to our evening worship here at Shepherd of the Lakes Lutheran Church. Welcome to those who are streaming with us online this evening. Tonight, um, we continue our, our Lenten journey. We continue our walk to the cross as we listen to what our Savior says uh, from that cross. Uh, we continue to hear the words that he speaks. And tonight we hear a strange word, a word that is quite different from what we've heard our Savior speak so far. But as we hear those words, we come to understand something incredibly important, something very important for ourselves. We'll talk more about that in our service for today. Our service, which is completely printed out for you in your worship folder, will also be displayed for you on the screens. Uh, we'll begin with our, our normal sentences, the Lord bless your worship this evening. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, the day is almost over. Be our light and scatter the darkness, and hear our evening prayer and praise. We continue with our hymn, Christ the Life of All the Living, uh, which you'll find printed for you. Please note if you're looking at your worship folder, it does continue on the next page as well for the last lines.
we continue our reading of the passion history of our Lord. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled the fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly that this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy! Who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me, and if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, are you then the Son of God? He replied, you say that I am. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. So ends our reading. We continue now with our sermon hymn, the the fourth stanza of the seven words. for our meditation this evening taken from Matthew chapter 27. From noon until three in the afternoon darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon Jesus cried out in a loud voice Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani which means my God, my God why have you forsaken me? The word of our Lord. There comes a point in some stories when a character figures out exactly what's going on, when they understand the full picture. And you can see that in in maybe an action thriller or even a, a mystery novel. There's that one little bit of information given, or there's that, that certain word or phrase that, that gives the, the character this, this light bulb moment, this epiphany, and they understand the, the gravity of the situation, they understand the weight of it all, whether how dangerous the situation is, or, or they solve the mystery. During these 40 days of Lent, we have heard and we will continue to hear our Savior speak from the cross. We've heard words of forgiveness, words of fulfillment, even words of triumph. And yet the word we hear our Savior speak tonight is so very different from that. 
They sound strange to us because they are so different from what we're used to hearing our Savior say. But as strange as these words are, this word helps us understand what is going on. It's here that we come to understand the cross and what our Savior is doing and just how much that means for you and for me. We understand that here in this word of desolation. It was very clear from Jesus' life just how great his relationship with his heavenly Father was. On the one hand, you have the Father talking about the Son. You think about his baptism or even on the Mount of Transfiguration where heaven opens up, light shines down on the sun, and you hear the Father say, this is my Son whom I love. This is my chosen one. This is the one you should listen to. This is the one in whom I am well pleased. And on the other hand, you have the Son talk about his relationship with the Father. You see how he says, I I need to carry out my Father's business. You see his perfect obedience. We see his perfect trust. You see that perfect communication that he has with his heavenly father. Constantly going to him in prayer. Jesus himself even gives us a a sneak peek into this relationship. He reveals a little bit. He says, I and the father are one. Both one God, and yet two separate persons. They share this, this beautiful, perfect relationship that we, we can't understand, that we can't comprehend, that we can't explain. And yet in these words tonight, we see what has become of that relationship. The environment itself tells us what's going on. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. No longer was there light shining down on Jesus, but this supernatural darkness that that enveloped the area around Jesus and quite even possibly the rest of the earth too. This darkness lasted from, some say, the the sixth hour to the ninth hour or or noon until about three o'clock in the afternoon. And it was right around 3 o'clock that we hear Jesus cry out. And it says he cries out with a, lo- with a, with a, with a great voice. With what little strength he has left from being on that cross. Jesus cries out and Matthew records the Aramaic for us. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Not words of triumph or forgiveness, but words of agony. Words of loneliness. Words that were first prophesied all the way back in Psalm 22, where we get this first person perspective of what is happening to the Messiah, both physically, mentally, and and spiritually. To understand these words and and what the environment is saying is to understand the cross and what is going on with our Savior. But that darkness was symbolic. It was symbolic of what was happening to Jesus on on a cosmic level. So often in in Scripture, Jesus not only described hell as a place of eternal suffering and punishment, but also a place of darkness. Darkness. That is what hell is. It is darkness. Hell is the the complete absence of God's presence. There is no light there. There is no joy. There is no comfort. There is only agony and suffering and torment where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth where the worm never dies. This is what our Savior is experiencing on the cross. This is why he cries out about being forsaken because he has been. There on the cross, our Savior is facing the punishment for every single sin. And he's doing it alone. The Father has abandoned him. The Father has left him to desolation. 
what was once this, this beautiful, perfect, mysterious relationship has now been mysteriously severed. And Jesus calls out to his God for comfort, but there is none. There is only suffering and darkness and pain of hell. And we see just how, how serious these words are, especially when we understand who is saying them. This is the perfect, innocent Son of God. The one who, who, who had a, a perfect, obedient life to his heavenly Father. He had done nothing wrong. And yet here he is, here he is suffering the torment for the sins of those who should have been left desolate. There he is with a ruined relationship with his heavenly Father to save those who had a ruined relationship with, his heavenly fa- with their heavenly Father. He was abandoned by those who... He was abandoned to save those who deserved it. And this is where the full weight of everything hits us. Because we know that's where we fall. We deserve the darkness. We deserve to be abandoned because we were so quick to abandon our Heavenly Father, so quick to turn from Him and to turn to sin. Our Heavenly Father wanted this perfect, this this beautiful relationship with Him, and yet at every opportunity we chose to sever it. Our thoughts drifting away from God toward impure thoughts about others to our sinful, impure desires. Our words showing disrespect and dishonor to our Heavenly Father in the way we use His name and the way we speak to and about others. Showing direct defiance and disobedience to the one we were created to serve, looking instead to satisfy ourselves, to gratify ourselves. So we deserve to be desolate. We deserve to be there suffering the torment and the pain and the agony. And yet this is where the weight of the cross hits us. That's not what we see. That's not what we hear. Instead, there we see the perfect, innocent Son of God on the cross. And there we hear him with the little bit of strength he has left. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we hear no answer. Heaven remains silent. The father willingly abandons his son and the son willingly takes all punishment. And he does it for you and for me. This is the full picture of the cross. That in this word of desolation, we have restoration. For there the Son of God dies, there He suffers hell for us to pay for every single one of our sins. There the Father willingly abandons His Son, there the Son willingly allows His relationship to be severed so that the Father could win new children for Himself. So that the Savior could win for himself brothers and sisters. Jesus was willingly forsaken on that cross so that our relationship with our Heavenly Father can be restored. Through Jesus' suffering and pain, we now have true joy. We have true comfort. We have true peace. No longer do we have to fear the pain and agony of hell. No longer do we have to worry about any kind of desolation. So let's go from here tonight. Let us continue on our Lenten journey. Let us continue to hear our Savior speak from the cross. Let us continue to ponder what that cross means. What sin is, what its result and consequence are. But also the one who faced it for us.
let us continue to remember that in this word of desolation, we find restoration. Amen. You may remain seated. We'll respond with our hymn, Jesus I Will Ponder Now, stanzas two and three. We continue with our thank offerings to the Lord. As opposed to what is uh, written in the worship folder, please stand. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, all holy desires, 
all good counsels and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. We'll close this evening with our final hymn, Upon the Cross Extended.
evening to all of you. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Again, a special thank you to everyone who helped contribute uh, tonight with our supper. It was a, a wonderful time, a great time to come together for some fellowship and some really good food, really good food. Um, next week will not be me again. Uh, we're still continuing our Lenten rotation. Um, I have to double check who that is, but you will not see me here next week. You'll see me on Sunday where I hope to see you um, all again. Until then, may the Lord be with you.